Welcome back guys, my name is Brandon and today we've got a quick repair video. Stick around. This is what we're working on today guys. This is the mower deck off my riding mower. This has a lot of hours on it. When I bought this uh, riding tractor it was beat and I completely restored it. I'll have a link to that video up above. I've put probably a hundred hours uh, on this since I've owned it. And you can see something's happened here. This wheel's actually bent, so we got to straighten that out. We got some welds that are uh, broken on the mower deck. We got to fix those. Here's one broken weld right there, so we'll have to get that reconnected. And I don't know what's caused this. I put all new belts on this uh, when I bought it. So, like I said, this probably has a hundred hours on it. And it's just weird. It's kind of like broken apart. I didn't even know I had a problem with it. It was actually working uh, working fine. So wasn't causing any problems. Wasn't slipping. So I don't know. Weird. If you guys know what would cause that, uh, let me know so I can try to prevent it in the future. But we'll have to get a new we'll have to get a new belt, I guess. Then we'll flip it over and examine the underside. Too bad. I also completely restored this mower deck. I used a chassis saver on it and it's done a really good job. Then I fabricated these uh, little pieces right here to duplicate the pieces that were destroyed on it uh, when I got it. So I made all these pieces. So that's stuff I made if you guys want to check out that video. But I don't remember this, but I guess it's got grease fittings in it. And I don't know if that's something that I put in it or something that it came with. There's another grease fitting there. I do know I replaced one of these bearings for sure. Uh, so I might as well grease these. And while we're at it, doing our metal fabrication, we might as well sharpen these blades up a little bit. So while we're right here and we got it upside down, let's get these blades off it. Look at that guys, you can see I had uh, put some copper anti-seize on this so I knew that this bolt would come off. And it's been on there for years, came right off. I must have missed that one guys, it doesn't look like it has a whole lot of anti-seize on it. These actually don't look all that bad guys. My yard's pretty, pretty smooth, so I don't really hit a lot of things. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of slowly touch this edge up, just trying to like follow that same profile. They make, I think, a jig that actually helps you do this, but... You know, this is the first time I've done this to this machine in uh, three years, I think. So it doesn't, it wouldn't really be worth it to me. I could just go along this and just put a new edge on it with a grinder and call it a day. Actually, I'm going to try a flap wheel, whereas I don't have to really take a lot off. I think a flap wheel would work actually better. Okay, that feels good right there. Got to do a little more on this outside edge. I'm not really trying to take a lot off, guys. I don't want this to get too unbalanced. Thank you. 
Yeah, those feel good and sharp. Yeah, that feels pretty sharp. It's not like a razor, but it's pretty sharp. I mean, it won't cut paper, but it's sharp enough to cut grass. Yeah, that'll work. It'll work good. I thought this one was bent at first. Shaped weird. I guess that's just how it is. My lawn is even, so must be doing something right. This came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. I didn't do anything on the back side other than I just wanted to take off like if there was any burr on the back I just wanted to knock it down, but yeah, I think they came out Came out really well. So I think this is the first time they've ever been sharpened too In the middle one middle one's a little it just looks weird and I remember when I put this on I just thought that this was a weird um, odd shape, but this is how it's built and I don't know why I think this is called mulching blades is what they're called Kind of weird looking. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me like how this could cut straight when the blade isn't straight. Like it seems like it would cut at this height and at this height, but I don't know. Obviously it works because I've been using them for three years. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to hopefully try to grease these spindles. So put a little grease in there. This one has a grease fitting and I can't see that this one has one. So maybe this is the one that I've already uh, replaced. I know I replaced one of them. And then after we get them greased, we'll get the blades back on and I'm gonna fluid film underneath this deck. Then we'll flip it over and we'll do all our welding repairs. I was taking it. I'll put a few pumps in it. I'll move on to the next one real quick because I don't know where it's going and I don't want a big pot of grease all over on top of my table. I don't know where we're going to start seeing the grease come out. I didn't see any on the other side. I mean, that's got to be pretty good. All right, might as well get the blades back on it and seeing how good that never sees work last time, we'll do it again. All right, tighten it up. While we're right here, I'm just gonna throw some fluid film down in it just to help protect it. So I'm not handling it a hundred times. Plus it'll keep the blades from rusting too. And we got this all good and covered. That'll help just to protect things a little bit. This tractor's got like 600 hours on it, so it's pretty much nearing its life expectancy. And I'm sure that this mower deck will probably outlast everything just because, like I said, it is kind of getting up there in hours, but Try to take care of it and make it last a little bit longer. What that'll do is that'll just help protect uh, things from rusting, and this stuff works awesome. Uh, I just did my snow blower, and I just used it for the first storm, and it still looks like I just did it. It doesn't even look like it was uh, used in the storm. Even the chute and everything, it still has all this stuff on it, even though all the snow has been run through it. So this holds up really well and stays on for a long time. I'm real happy though how these fabricated uh, parts that I built 
uh, how well they just stayed. They're looking almost factory bought. So, like I said, if you want to see how I did that, just go check that link out. Did a lot of work on this. Picked this tractor up pretty cheap. I think 250 bucks. It looked pretty rough when I got it, but it looks pretty good now. All right, let's get this flipped over, and we'll get those uh, get that welding done. Let's get this leg straightened out. And you see how this is kind of like cantered off? You had a good angle for that. This is like canted off at an angle. We got to bend this bracket straight down here. It's bent right down here. We'll throw a spud wrench on it and try to get it to straighten out. You can see how it's straight here and then it cants off that way. That I just threw a little bit of grease on it. There we go. Look how much better that looks, guys. Now, now that's all straight in order. Must some this must have got hooked up on something. Weird. Weird. I don't know why that belt did that, guys. So this belt right here, this bigger one, is what drives the blades. Now this belt here is what they drive themselves so this is a single belt and this is the tensioner right here so you can see when I when I pull on it this tensioner is actually working everything everything feels nice and tight there's no play in it and this belt actually looks really good I just I don't know why I don't know why this belt uh, is all broken uh, I'll have to order a new belt I guess but for now Let's see if we can get this fixed. I'm not sure why that cracked. Maybe vibration, I guess. But you can see it's broken right off, so we'll have to prep that and weld it. Oh, that one looks good. That one looks good. I don't really see any other damage. I haven't really found any broken welds anywhere. Oh, look. Yeah, she's getting a little punky, guys. Yeah, she's got a little hole right there starting to. Yeah, she's getting a little thin. Probably be time for a, probably a new mower. It's probably not even worth getting a new mower deck for it. But, you know, I will keep my eyes peeled on Facebook Marketplace because there's a lot of good deals that can be had. And you guys know that I'm all about trying to save my stuff and make it last. Oh, no. I don't know what that's all about. That's solid. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe that's like a real isolated area right there. Just because there's that little lip of that piece of metal that I showed you that I made right there. So it's probably just holding moisture and, yeah, you can see, and debris and stuff like that. Yeah, it's no big deal. It's got a couple little pinholes. And if I remember correctly, I think that was like that before, so... Yeah, we'll be able to get a little more time out of it. I'm not too concerned. What I'm going to do, guys, so I don't create more work for myself, is I'm just going to prep it right in place, and then weld it, and then I'll just kind of pull this bolt last minute, put a little piece of paper down, then we'll paint it. Yeah, that works. There we go. Weld that right up. No problem. No sense making more work for ourselves than we have to make. Now we can just go right in there, weld that up, then remove this bolt, pick it up a little bit, and then I'll just spray it down with this color right here. Perfect. For this, I'm going to be using my Art Captain MIG 200. And one of the reasons I really love this machine is listen, or I should say, lack of what you can hear, because when this is on, and it's not under load, the fan doesn't run. And that is super nice. I just, the sound of a fan just buzzing away is irritating to me. So I just turned it off so I can show you a quick operation. And I like also that you can hook up a spool gun to this. So this will do MIG, TIG, and stick. And this is an awesome machine. So just snap it on in the back. It's gonna come on for a second. It just automatically shuts off and it just sits there waiting for you to pick it up and use it. So I'm going to show you the screen really quick. 
So this is your voltage uh, toggle selector here. Then you're going to pick which mode you want. So this would be stick, TIG. That would be MIG, so you can see the picture of the spool gun. And then that's just off the regular MIG torch. Then you pick your wire size. So uh, 9, 1, 6, 8 would be 30,000. So I, I feel for you guys that aren't used to the Imperial system because this machine is in the metric system, so we have to do the conversions. So just like you folks uh, overseas that you know get confused about the Imperial system, we here get confused with the metric. And no, I won't disagree. The metric system, I think, is a little bit easier. Uh, but that would be 30 thousandths as 0.8. Then you come over here, and this also does synergic. So this is like meters per minute or amperage. So right now it's on 100 amps, 17 volts. This right here is the function. So this right here would be 2T. Pull the trigger, wire comes out, let out, it stops. 4T, pull the trigger, let off, the wire continues to keep going. So that would be if you had it like automated. And then this one has a spot function right there. So those three dots mean spot. So we're going to put it on 2T. It's in synergic mode. And you can also adjust voltage and amperage independent of one another. And it's also got a hot start feature where you can turn up like the arc force at the beginning of the arc. So for wire, you can see I'm using Lincoln 30 thousandths. And I write 0.8 on it just so that I can remember and it's solid wire, but check this out guys. This machine comes standard with an LED light inside this cabinet. So how great is that? You can see everything. You can see your drive rollers, if you got any spare parts in there. I keep all my stuff in here, all my spare parts and keep it together. We gotta figure out what to set our machine for and this material here is what we're welding. So that's a little loose there. And then that's good there. So that's showing 16 gauge. Then I just got to do some conversions on my phone. And we can see that 16 gauge is 64 thousandths of an inch or 1.6 millimeters. So now we go over to our chart that's on the door. Now if you're in the United States and you work with the Imperial system, you're going to need to do these conversions. But the great thing is this machine tells you everything. So if you got no gas, you're to weld electrode negative. If you're using a gas, DC electrode positive. Wear welding steel gives you some examples of wire. W tells you what to use for rollers, tells you what polarity to use. We are using argon in CO2. It tells you what you should use for a gas flow rate. That is our wire size, which is 0.8. And here are the settings for material thickness. So you got one millimeter, so we'll call it two millimeters thick with 0.8 wire. That gives us 18.5 volts or a wire feed speed of nine. So we'll turn this to 18.5, 5, and that gives us 137 amps. That's how that works out. So we're on regular MIG, 0.8 size wire. FeCO2, that would be straight CO2. So steel with straight CO2. This is steel with mixed gas, so C25. And you can also do aluminum MIG with this machine. One thing in life, guys, that drives me nuts is when things are complicated. I like things to be really simple and really straightforward, and that's one of the reasons why I really like that MIG 200. I've actually given away one of those machines, and it was a little bittersweet giving it away because I was really attached to it. I just love how it functions. I don't use it a whole lot, but when I use it, I enjoy it, and I love using it. And if you want to know more about it, I'll have some links down below. You guys can check it out. One of the most important things, especially if you guys are just starting out, is making sure that you have your machine set up properly. That means making sure that you have the right tension on your drive rolls and that you have your spool set for the right tension. Because if you have these off, that's going to cause you feeding problems. It's going to cause bird nesting and a whole bunch of other problems. 
I have a video, if you want to check that out, that explains this in detail on how to set up a MIG welder. And I really like that this manufacturer is actually giving you flow rates for your gas. So you can go 8 to 12 based on that size wire. So that's what we're going to set it up for. So we'll come over here, again, standing off to the side. And we're going to open this valve up all the way. Because with non-flammable gases like argon and C25, these have what's called a back seating valve. So when you turn this back, it seals the stem of the valve uh, from leaking past it. So you open them all the way to seal them. Now I've got the MIG gun in my hand. I'm just going to pull the trigger and read the gas right here. You can see we've got about 2,000 PSI and looks like we're at about 25 PSI here. So we're at 17 CFH. So we'll back it off. There's 12 right there. Perfect. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just basically tack it together. I really don't know how this is going to work as far as, you know, feeding it and all that. I haven't, I don't have any scrap to test it on. Hmm, seems like we don't have good ground. All right, that's a little low for my liking. You can hear how sputtery that was, guys. Maybe 18 volts. We'll try that. Yeah, I think that's better. There we go. Yep, that's it right there. Caught the belt on fire, but we're not using it anyway, so. The machine will run a little bit and then once it cools off, it'll shut down, but yeah, that's it right there. That was flowing so nice. This machine just, it works super nice, guys. It puts down a really nice speed and it's super easy to adjust. That got a little crispy, but like I said, we're putting a new belt on it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is just back this off now. We'll wire brush this down a little bit and I might even have some of the same paint, I hope. Playing around, we'll just touch it up just to make it look a little bit better. But yeah. And that's thin, that's thin metal, that's 16 gauge, so that's almost like sheet metal. So, you know, if you were putting together patch panels on cars or something like that, this would work awesome for that. So when you've done your weld, it's a good thing, it just automatically shut out here, to shut down your bottles and drain all the pressure off your gauges. So bring it till it closes, till it's snug, and then just... Just give it a little bit of a snug. You don't want to go too much because you don't want to damage the valve. Then what you do is just give your MIG gun a squeeze and relieve that pressure. Watch. It'll go up and then it'll go right back down again. See that? And now you're all set. Now you can shut your machine off because there's no more pressure against these valves. Gotta make like a little shield just so I don't get overspray on everything, you know. And that's it, guys. Just a nice, quick simple repair and it's always nice when you can just maintain your stuff and keep it going so then you don't have to worry about it see like right now it's winter time we're not worrying about cutting our grass so now is like the perfect time to get this stuff taken care of versus like in the summer when you got a million things going on and uh, cutting your grass may be one of the last things that you want to do so got it all serviced we got our blade sharpened we got the spindles greased we got this damage fixed painted doesn't quite match but it's close enough it'll be just fine straighten out this little leg over here and put a little bit of grease in it and then just kind of looked everything over to make sure everything was good and gave it a nice quick shot of fluid film so that should last all summer long without any problems whatsoever provided obviously we don't run over anything or bang into something and bend it and damage it some more but yeah just go get another belt and 
I'll be in business. If you want to know about this machine or any of the tools that you saw me using, I have links down in the video description below. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. There's new videos every Friday. So please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, and God bless.